Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're tuned back into the USG Knowledge Hub, I'm Carl, and in today's short video, we're going to look at how to carry out an external earth fault loop impedance test, or otherwise known as your ZE test. Roll the credits. In today's video, we're looking at how to carry out an external earth fault loop impedance test, or otherwise known as the ZE test. And to do that, there's a few things that we need to make sure are in place before we carry out that test. So first of all, we need to make sure that the consume unit itself has been safely isolated, which it has. We've already re reproved this already. And this is one of our training rigs. So what we've done, we've carried out safe isolation um, already and we've made sure that this consume unit is now safely um, isolated and it's safe for us to carry out this test. So you've got to make sure that obviously the main switch is off. In this case, we've got an RCD acting as the main switch and all the MCBs are in the off position, including the main switch. And that's securely locked off in place and it gives us a point now where we can safely carry out this next test. So when carrying out the external earth fault loop impedance test it's important to make sure that like we've mentioned the main switch is turned off and it's safely isolated and we need to look at removing all parallel earth paths and the reason for this is to make sure that we get a true external earth fault loop impedance rather than taking into consideration any other parallel paths and um, which could be giving us a different reading or better reading so to start off by doing this test, we need to make sure that we remove all parallel earth paths. So what we need to do is look at the MAT and we need to remove our main earth. We can do this, and this is the only point that you should be doing this test, when the main switch is safely isolated. And then obviously by removing that main earth, we're not going to be subject to any risk of electric shock or anything if the fault was to happen with having the main earth out. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll remove that main earth and we'll move on to the next part of the test and show you just how to carry out that ZE. So now the main earth is removed. We've removed all parallel paths. And what we're going to look at now is how we set our test instrument up and what setting we'll put it on and how we're going to achieve the ZE. So what we need to do is on our MFT, in this case we've got the QTEC KT63, uh, we need to turn our dial so it goes to the loop high setting. And then what we want to do is connect our test leads, making sure we've checked them previous. We're going to connect onto the least dangerous first, being the earth make sure it's got a good connection and then what we want to do then is go into the neutral conductor and the line conductor this will display a voltage but what we're after doing is completing a cycle and getting a value for our external earth fault loop impedance so as i've mentioned the voltage is displayed, displayed on the test instrument we'll press the test button and that reading is 0 0.41 ohms and in this case, that is acceptable because we're dealing with a TNS system. So then what we need to do then is come off the line conductor, off the neutral conductor, and then off our main earth. Once we've done that, it's very important to put back in the main earth before we move on to any further tests. So once that main earth has been put back in, you can then move on to your next test. So it's important to remember when carrying out a ZE test that you look at the earthing arrangement within the property. And within the UK, we have three different earthing arrangements that you may come across. In this instance, we've tested a TNS system, but you may come across a TNCS system, also known as a PME or a TT system. So when testing a TNS system, like we have done today, then you should be looking at a maximum earth fault loop impedance of 0 0.8 ohms. And if you was looking for a TNCS or PME, you will be looking at a, a reading no greater than 0 0.35 ohms. And for a TT system, we'll be looking to have that reading no greater than 200 ohms. Thanks for watching. I hope this video has been some help to you. If you would like to tune into our channel to watch other videos such as safe isolation or the next test to follow on from this such as your PFCs, please tune in, like and subscribe and leave us comments below.